shots. What's up, combies? I'm Hannah. And I'm Olivia. And it's time to kombuchat. All right. So, how has the week been going, sister? The week has been wild. I feel like I've been busy every single day, and I've only been able to manage it because I recently started a new morning routine, and it's been kicking my days off. Yeah, honestly, same. Since the beginning of the year, really, I've been on a very good morning routine, which is newish for me. Um, I think newish in the sense that it's it's definitely a little more intentional what I'm including now and how I've noticed that affect my mood and productivity and and all of that good stuff. So if you didn't already, combies, that's what we're going to be talking about this week. Morning routines, night routines, what we do, options that you might want to do, Uh, how they're effective. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's do it. I'm excited because I I don't think we've really talked about our morning routines much with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I know like snippets of what you're doing in your routines. I know a little bit more about your night routine, but I'm excited to learn along with the combis about you. Well, back at ya. (laughs) Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you've been doing this week and how it's been going? Let's start morning. Yeah, so I realized in the morning that I needed to find a way to motivate myself for the rest of the day. And so I had this need to wake up earlier and feel like I was being more productive. I was waking up around 8 every day just naturally And I decided to start setting an alarm again. This is the first time I've set an alarm, I guess, in months, really. And I've started to wake up to my alarm, lay in bed for a little bit, just allow myself to really, you know, say hello to the day. And then I go upstairs. I make tofu scramble literally every morning. I eat tofu scramble and sriracha. And then I do a workout. I've been doing like 20 to 40 minutes of working out and then a yoga session afterwards. And that really has made the difference in me finding a way to start paying attention to my breath for the day, finding a way to move, grounding myself, and also giving me those endorphins from working out to feel like I'm motivated to really get my day going. This is Okay, this has been something I've battled with for a long time because in college, I got really into morning workouts as well. Before college, I wasn't into them. Then once I graduated, I was doing a lot of walks in the afternoon because it would be warm. But now I'm back into the mornings and I think it's the right thing for me. It really sets my day into motion. Yeah, so I mean, something that I've found interesting is just, especially in pandemic times, how necessary... A routine is. I remember when the first lockdown happened in the U.S. and routines kind of became all the rage. Like, get yourself into a routine. You need to get into a routine because everyone was like working from home or just being at home. Uh, and really, it it does. It's it's just funny how humans just kind of we need structure in some sense, at least a majority of us, a good majority needs some kind of structure to like really feel like you can get stuff done. Well, cause it feels like it's something you can control in a world that you otherwise can't. That is a very good point. I remember you brought this up to me once when I was having just so much work, like I was doing tons of client work. I was feeling like I was doing it from start of my day to end of my day. Honestly, I really was. I had just made the jump into consulting full time and I was like trying to juggle all this stuff with my business and my clients. And I remember you were like, you got to take like at least like 10 minutes at the start of the day for yourself and just watch and see how much more in control of your day you will actually feel. I stand by this. (laughs) Yeah, I do. (laughs) 
I started doing that then. Uh, this is a couple years ago now, and it did make a huge difference for me. But I will say something about 2020 and having been home that whole year and now, you know, into 2021, I have really grown what my morning and night routines are. And I think probably part of that has to do with I am home so much. You know, there mm -hmm. used to be a lot more variety in my day and I used to have to go occasionally meet with clients or go to events or whatever. And now I really just am home so much. So it almost feels like routines have become even more important now than ever before. And it'll be kind of interesting to see the transition of, you know, what we change, if anything, when quote unquote regular life for the most part starts to come back into the, the ether here. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. Okay, okay. So, okay, walk me through your morning routine. Okay, yeah. So, I'm gonna just be blatantly honest with you, combies. My morning routine typically starts with me waking up and getting on my phone. It is probably the number one thing you shouldn't do. It's literally a resolution that I had made to myself, like, 2021, I'm not gonna start the day on the phone. And I was so good, like, the first three days. And then... <laughs> Honestly, Three like days. maybe January 3rd, January 4th, I was just like, okay, but I need to look. And I have been terrible at doing that since then. So don't do what I do for that particular part. Um, it's tough because I work and consulting for a tech client who has this big event every February. And so the first six to eight weeks of the year, absolute insanity for me. And so I just couldn't commit to the no checking the phone in the morning. So everyone don't do that. But from there, I have done good things. So I do a little bit of cleanup in the morning. I just kind of tidy things up around the house. For those of you listening, she's shaking her head. It sets me up for success though. I feel organized. I feel, you know, in control, organized, like, okay, I've got like these little things around the house done. Honestly, it's like 10 to 15 minutes. It is nothing. And it really sets me up to feel like, whew, okay, that's out of the way, feeling like I'm ready to go. After that, I usually take little Ziggy on the run on a walk, which is great because it gets me outside. So no matter what, I'm getting some outside time, you know, rain or shine, uh, which, you know, he and I both kind of detest the cold, but it's good. It gets us outside, gets us in some natural sunlight, gets me moving for the day, which is important. So we usually do a short walk. Um, I always put on sunscreen before that. That's another part of my morning routine. Got to keep that skincare game in check. Get it? And then when I come back, usually water with lemon, coffee or tea, and then some kind of breakfast with protein, whether it is a smoothie, I just got a Vitamix, as a lot of you have probably seen on the gram, and um, or like a scramble, whatever. Something with protein to like really feel like I'm gonna be able to get going. And then I usually do some other skincare stuff, you know, like jade roller, moisturizer, maybe do my makeup if I'm in the mood. Generally kind of like clean myself up a little bit. I've found that in quarantine and with COVID, just doing a little bit of that makes a huge difference for me personally, as opposed to just kind of, you know, staying in my pajamas and like moving on with the day, even though I could, and it's tempting. And believe me, I rock a lot of leggings and sweatpants. If I just do a little something to feel like I'm getting slightly dressed up out of my roll out of bed look, I do feel like I'm more productive. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting because you start off with a little productivity, do your movement, and then you eat breakfast. I always eat breakfast first because I'm like, I need to fuel my body into this. But you do well waiting. Yeah, I really do. I've played a ton with intermittent fasting and fasting mornings and stuff in general. So, and I'm just honestly one of those people who's never been super hungry in the mornings. I know everyone says breakfast is key and I do eat it, but it's usually just a little bit later. 
Okay, okay, I like it. It sounds like a pretty good balance of feeling like you're getting, and you are, getting tasks done, but also taking the time to set you up for a good day, whether it's eating that meal or putting on a little bit of makeup or a cute outfit. It's still um, a nice a nice balance, I think. Yeah, I think so. And I've played around with this so much during the past year. Yeah. And this is just kind of the key things that work for me. You know, some days they may not be quite in order or like I'm not super regimented like, okay, next is this. I know for some people that's helpful or I even know some people who schedule like down to the dang minute what they're going to do in their Google calendar, like every part of the day. And mm-hmm. I even tried that at one point. And I'm like, I'm not doing all this. Like it did not work. <laughs> that is way too much commitment for me. <laughs> Let's be real. It's. It's too much. So yeah, this is what's worked well for me for, for morning. Do you have anything in the daytime that you do on routine in your work day? I always have, well, cause I have a morning coffee. I don't think I mentioned that. I always have an afternoon coffee as well. If I don't, I really start to drag and I tried to see if it was like something I could go without <laughs> and unfortunately it's not. I, I don't know exactly have it at the same time every time. I say, I don't know, maybe maybe like around like one or two, definitely after I've eaten lunch, but it's usually I just kind of start to feel like I'm lagging or getting a little bit tired. And if I don't have time to do some movement again, like maybe take a walk, then I will just, I will drink coffee. Yes. I also need an afternoon pick me up usually between three and 4 PM for me. And so what I've started doing is that's when I typically do my workout. So Mm. I've got the walk already in the morning. So for me, then in the afternoon, I kind of need something else. So that's usually when I'll do some core stuff or yoga, something like that. Um, We've talked about this before, but even just like a 20-minute hit workout, a 20-minute yin workout, whatever, 20 minutes. I just try to at least do that. And then I usually feel like, whew, cool, okay, I'm ready to continue getting things done and being productive, having gotten in a little bit of activity for myself in the afternoons. I noticed that when I was doing that with you and like we had like each other for accountability to block out that time and work it into the day, it worked really well for me. But then once I stopped doing that with you and I was back in my own routine, I would um, tell myself, okay, I'm going to still use this time to do some yoga or do this or that. And then I would just slowly push it off, push it off, push it off. It would be like 7 p.m. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to watch a movie and then I'll do yoga after the movie. And then I would have already brushed my teeth and I'd be like, well, I don't want to do yoga now that my teeth are brushed. (laughs) And so it just, (laughs) it would not work out. So that's when I made the switch back to my mornings again. And I was like, I'm just going to get it done now you know so it's just interesting that it works a little bit differently even just with me like being in the same location as you versus not yeah yeah love it gotta do what your body tells you to what about evenings what does that look like for you routine wise okay I typically consume some sort of media from seven to nine I would Mm -hmm. say. I watch shows or movies or YouTube videos or TikTok. (laughs) I pretty much, I pretty much consume media from seven to nine always. Whether I eat before that, see, I don't really get that hungry for dinner. Like you don't get very hungry for breakfast. So Mm -hmm. usually I'll just have something small. Like I'll have a few dinosaur nuggets that are vegan or I'll make like a salad and she's laughing at me. She and loves a chicken nugget shape, folks. I do. I just found out they have Mickey Mouse shaped ones at Walmart oh. and I'm so excited to get them. So usually I eat just something kind of small and I don't know, sometimes I'll eat it before I start watching things or sometimes like in the middle of watching things I'll be like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. I'm going to go make some dinosaur nuggets. And then... I start to, 
I start to wind down more. Oh, I always put on my blue light glasses because I have always wanted to have prescription glasses, but I was born with wonderful vision. <laughs> and so I love any excuse to wear glasses. And so as soon as the sun starts going down, I put them on. And Which this helps. Can everyone just please hear this? <laughs> oh my gosh. I have Meanwhile, I've always wanted them. Contacts in sixth grade, nerdy glasses. <laughs> So I always put those on and I know they have a lot of benefits like they can help you. Um, it reduces the blue light from screens that your eyes are taking in and that can actually affect the way your body produces melatonin. And so you may not be able to fall asleep simply because you're consuming more screen time. So it actually does have a great health effect uh, benefit and I just look adorable in them. I love them so much and I just Snapchat everyone in them. And then, you know, I do the regular things like take off my makeup if I had it on, brush my teeth. I read for, I don't know, just until I get tired. Reading really puts me in the mood to like <laughs> go to bed. And so then after I read, I do something not great, which is I watch cooking videos until I fall asleep. So I am <laughs> on my screen all the way up until I go to bed. But I just love watching cooking videos at night. I think they're so soothing and they just, oh, I love it. Whoa, everyone, please tell us if you feel this way. I love it. It just, <laughs> it just rides me into a sleep train of goodness. Yum. I don't know if that's really a routine. It kind of just feels like a bunch of random things that I do, but I do most of them every single night. So mine looks a little different, I guess. Like usually, you know, depending on the day, maybe I walk Ziggy in the evening, maybe morning. It just really kind of depends. So that that's part of my routine either way. I usually use nighttime for some kind of self-care. So I love doing a bath soak with some bath salts, as we all <laughs> know. Um, I turn on all the mood lighting in my apartment. If you've seen on the gram, I've got a whole highlight dedicated to mood lighting um, because it is truly just love living in a little spaceship. <laughs> Uh, I usually do some kind of skincare routine again. So I love doing like a cleanser. I'll, maybe I'll do a mask, um, maybe the roller again, something like that. And then I ordered a red light from Juve recently. Um, there's a ton of like benefits to red light therapy. We'll do a whole podcast episode on that later. And so I'm wanting to incorporate that more into my night routine, especially with the skincare element. Um, if I missed yoga in the afternoon, I'll do a yin session in the evening. And if I did do it, then I'm trying to do stretching in the evening regardless, just because it helps all my muscles wind down, I guess. If I'm not doing a soak, then I need to do some stretching. I have like it's so much tension. As we've talked about, I absolutely love a massage. And so doing some stretching or soaking in the evenings ugh, just brings me like a calm zen. I'm trying to be better about wearing my blue light blockers. You were really good about it whenever we're hanging out of reminding me. Mm -hmm. I have them right by my computer, so I don't know why. I just, I need to get better about that, but I do love wearing those, and I know some people are like, I don't know if it really works, but I truly do notice a difference in my sleep. I sleep so much better when I, when I put those on. And then I, for the last hour of my night... I read in red light. So I have a bunch of these light bulbs that turn red, which is supposed to help you calm down and really help you sleep a lot better. And I turn all of those on and I read and I do not touch my screen or a screen from that point on and at least an hour before bedtime. That's insane. Yeah. So I've, I'm done with my phone at that point. And actually, one thing I do with my phone, I turn the screen to red light. I should put up a little tutorial on this, but I make the whole thing a little 
you know, that little function on iPhones where it's like you tap a button three times and it'll like change the screen colors. I turn, I turn mine red. And so the last couple of hours that I'm even using my phone, I'm using it without any of the bright colors or the screen brightness. I'm using it on a red mode. And then my last hour, I read in red light and stay away from my screens entirely. So I may be terrible about it in the morning, but I am really good about it at night. So, <laughs> and let me p- point out to that that it is different than turning your phone on night mode and dark mode, which I yes. do starting at around 7 p.m. It okay. literally is red. It literally is a red screen light. Like it's it's different yeah. than just those two modes on your iPhone. Night mode brings up a good point, which is the importance of setting boundaries in your day with communication. I feel like we could do a whole podcast on that. And we (laughs) honestly should, because I I get so many questions on Instagram, like about boundary setting with consulting and working with clients. And how do you know, like, how do you stop? And, and 2020 made it so hard because everybody, uh, most people, you know, are at home working all the time, kind of, it just starts becoming a habit of being responsive. I personally got to a place where I was like, okay, if I wanted to be on call like this, I would have gone into medicine, (laughs) definitely considered that career path heavily at one Mm -hmm. point and become, you know, a physician who is on call and making the big bucks to, to give away that peace of mind of having time for yourself. For me, I definitely have set boundaries. I don't have Slack notifications, wire notifications, signal notifications on my phone period. So Mm -hmm. mornings and evenings, I do not. I know a lot of people who are even better at this than me, even remove email and and set better boundaries there. Whereas for me, it's like the first thing I look at in the morning. I think that's another really important piece of morning and night routines. Cool. So some other things that I did just want to run through that I know have worked for other people because they've sent them to me. Like anytime I've gone on and talked about morning and night routines and key benefits for me on Instagram and whatnot, I've had a lot of DMs from people on other things that worked. And so along with everything we've talked about, I know journaling is a big one. I know you do that sometimes. It may not be morning Mm -hmm. or night routine, but for some people... That seems to work really well. Um, Meditation is a big one. I'm trying to do that with breath work this year. I'm either doing breath work in the afternoon if I want to like warm up and awaken my body or I'm doing it at night to like focus and calm down. Huge difference for me, but some people take it a step further with doing a lot more meditative practice with their breath work. I don't know that I'm there yet. But I want to get there. Um, Yeah, I get that. That's a big one. And then another one I hear a lot is actually setting aside time for creative. If you want to paint or color or garden or play music or whatever, um, blocking out that time in your day as part of an evening or morning routine so that you make sure you fulfill that creative energy can also be another really good option. I like that. I think a couple that I've thought of were gratitude. Ooh. Whether it's a gratitude journal, which I actually have an app for that called the five minute journal, or just taking some time morning or night to be grateful for something in the day. I know that helps a lot of people like feel grounded and connected to their day as a whole. And then there's also one, and I may be saying these wrong, but I think this is right. So this was one I learned when you wake up, you take time to wake up by looking around the room and listing five things you can see, four things you can feel, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. (laughs) Wow. I don't know what I taste in the morning, but... Probably like your retainer. (laughs) (laughs) I recently accidentally sprayed perfume on mine, and all night I tasted lavender, and it was just not a good time. So I guess I would have a real taste. 
<laughs> that would have grounded you. Yeah. Yeah. I know that that's just like a, a nice one to take those not even five minutes probably to start your day and feel in control and notice your environment and your surroundings and be like, okay, I'm, I've arrived. Yeah, absolutely. Some sort of presence or meditative exercise like that I think is is really cool. All right. Well, I think we've kind of wrapped all we can on our personal routines. We would love, love, love to hear yours in the comments. So leave them for us on YouTube or preferably Instagram. We'd love to hear from you there. Comments, DMs, all of the above. It is time for the sweet and spicy round. I'm dancing. I'm excited. For those of you new to the show, every week we ask each other or our guests a series of sweet and spicy questions to round out this segment of the show. You want to start? I want to start by asking you one. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So sweet or spicy? Um, uh, I'll let you choose. (gasps) Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, let's do sweet. Okay. Okay. This is one of my favorite questions of all time. If you had a cow and each udder could produce a different beverage and you could only Uh. have those four beverages for the rest of your life... What four beverages would each utter produce? And water is not included. What? You already get water for free outside of the cow. Oh my god, do I have to milk it? Mm, it's probably like a soda dispenser more. Oh, so <laughs> disturbing. So incredibly disturbing. Can I just button it? Well, I don't do dairy milk so but I love alternative milk so probably gonna have to go with either oat milk or almond milk Mm -hmm. uh, for utter one uh coffee is definitely gonna have to be an utter for me smart obviously we're gonna need some kind of kombucha happening so that's right what one Ugh, that's a little too tough to narrow but I'm gonna need some kind of kombucha utter or gosh so hard between tea and an alcohol option. I was going to say, where is your alcohol? I guess if this is for the rest of my life, I would probably want some wine in there or maybe tequila. I don't know. Yeah, those are good. Those are really good. I think you have balanced beverages. It's still just kind of the thought of those squirting (laughs) out is a lot, but (laughs) moving on. Uh, Sweet or spicy? Um, sweet. Do you have a classic dance move? I feel like this is such a good one for you because you were a dancer for so many years. I break it down. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) You heard it here, combies. I make a fool of myself, but I love dancing. It's so fun. Okay, that didn't quite answer (laughs) the question. (laughs) Should this be on the spicy section? (laughs) Um, I don't know. I could get two, I could give two different answers here, but I'm going to go ahead and give the sweet answer. Okay. Which is probably the robot because I, um, I fell into this pattern, this habit, if you will, of whenever there was a really awkward situation I was in with like other people, multiple, or just one other person, I would just kind of start doing the robot what? to kind of <laughs> ease the tension of the situation. Okay, a little bit concerning, because when you said robot, I was starting to think to myself, oh yeah, she does that a lot. Oh my <laughs> It's usually when I feel uncomfortable. Wow. I'll just kind of start like... OMG. This it's is true. so you. It's true. Yeah, it started like a lo- like probably eight or nine years ago. It's like as a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's, I mean, uh, that would be it. Okay, so today I've got 
kind of a different one. I've got Brew Doctor's Love. Oh, I love Brew Doctor. Do you? Yes. Oh, cool. This is one of my favorite kombucha brands. So this is a good example of branding where the flavor profile is not in the name. Mm-hmm. Love. What is it? Wouldn't I like to know? <laughs> <laughs> So this is a blend of lavender, chamomile, and jasmine green tea. This sounds amazing. This sounds right up your floral alley. Yes. So dark bottle, which is great. Uh, It is lavender, and that is very evident in the branding, which I personally love. You know, I love love the branding part of all this. Mm -hmm. So they've got those colors. They've got a nice gold. I actually really love the font on this. So overall, like branding on this gets high, high marks for me. I really, really like it. Um, Let me tell you just a tad about Brew Doctor. Each batch of Brew Doctor kombucha we make is crafted from the beginning. We start with high quality, loose leaf organic teas, blend in organic herbs, fruits, juices, or other botanicals, and offer you a raw, authentic kombucha at its tastiest. Cheers. Cute. I will say one thing that they do that I love is they are part of 1% for the planet. So they donate 1% of the revenue of every bottle of their love kombucha, this exact one. To nonprofits focused on benefiting the planet. I love that. That's really great. We love a brand that has some sort of like give back in their branding um, as part of their company. So that's cool. I do like that they have some tasting notes on the side of the bottle as well. Um, So this one, all you need. Aromatic jasmine green tea joins roses, lavender, and chamomile to create a refreshingly bright botanical brew. And then they have fruity, spicy, floral, and herbal. And floral has three out of four. Herbal has one out of four. Fruity and spicy are empty on the love. So that tells you off the bat, this is going to be a more floral, herbal feel. So if you're not, if you don't love those, this is not for you. They do have the 1% of the planet on the bottle, which is great. They even tell you what nonprofit it's going to with the purchase of this bottle, which is cool. This one is going to ecology in classrooms and outdoors an Oregon nonprofit that brings outdoor science lessons into grade school classrooms. Uh, This one also does tell you alcohol extracted, so that's a plus. And brewed in Portland, Oregon, so that is where this is from. Dark bottle, 60 calories, the serving size is the full bottle, and 12 grams of sugar, and all of that is added. Makes sense, and there is not a lot of fruit happening in this one. So another almost clear. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a little murky. Light color to it. I don't know if it's so much sediment or just kind of that it's got a little something to the body. It smells floral. Definitely. Not a particular one comes through to me as like Mm -hmm. the strong note, but a floral scent for sure. Yeah, just overall. Cheers, combis. Ooh. Wow. (laughs) That's really good. This is great. It has the most beautiful lingering aftertaste where I feel like I'm being pampered. (laughs) Little mouth pampering happening. It is. Wow. I really like it. I don't necessarily lean floral, fruity, or spicy. I'm kind of like open. But for me, this gets like really high taste marks. I love the blend of floral that's here. Um, I sometimes don't love when I just get a strong floral of one flavor in a kombucha, and this blend is really, really good. Yeah, it's kind of subtle when it first hits your tongue, Mm -hmm. and then it kind of expands into this medley of floral tastes. That strong, tangy punch that a lot of kombuchas have this does not. No. And so if you're someone who doesn't like that strong tang, sometimes a little sour note, this is incredibly smooth, which is which is great. Yeah, it would be a good one to start someone off with, I think, mm-hmm. to kind of get them used to what kombucha that flavor is um, because it's very subtle. It's not too crazy on the taste buds. This is going to be my first five. Wow. Yeah. I'm kind of keeping everything in mind. The branding is just, I love it. Um, I absolutely love the fact that every bottle 
every purchase goes toward a nonprofit focused on benefiting the planet. Mm -hmm. The bottle is obviously recyclable, recyclable. And the taste for me is phenomenal. Uh, This is just extremely well done. It doesn't feel too fizzy either. If you're somebody who doesn't love a ton of fizz and maybe that's turned you off to certain kombuchas before, it's just so smooth. This may be the smoothest I've personally had before. Without Um, um, lacking flavor. Yes, and that is a huge distinction. Every sip, I get exactly the amount of flavor I want, but it's still incredibly smooth. So I absolutely love this one. Yeah, I would give this a five as well. Really for all the reasons you've said, the packaging is beautiful. It's got like this kind of almost wallpaper design. Uh, yeah, I love, I love Brew Doctor. I love this. Love. We love love. We love love. Brew Doctor, we love you. Love wins. Love it all. Five out of five on the SCOBY scale for Brew Doctor. All right. Well, that wraps up today's episode so shout out to gold threads this has been an on the run media production please make sure to like review comment and subscribe on itunes youtube spotify and wherever you listen to podcasts of course let us know your favorite part of the episode in the comments and on instagram feel free to submit your sweet and spicy questions on the gram youtube our mailing list, all of the above. You can find me on the gram at Blonde on the Run, B L O N D on the Run. And you can find me on the gram at Olivia, O L I V I H U H. See you next time, Combies. Bye.